Hi, my name is Bill Bradley. I'm an extreme endurance athlete, and this is my video newsletter. The topic of today's newsletter is no excuses. I have attempted the English channel five times. Five times I have not been able to swim it. Every time when I came back, I thought to myself, that wasn't my fault. I blamed it on the weather. I blamed it on the pilot. I blamed it on hypothermia. I blamed it on being seasick. I thought all of these were valid reasons to not make it. But every time I would tell this story to somebody in my club, my club has great swimmers, the South End Rowing Club. We have some of the greatest swimmers in the world, the endurance swimmers. They, uh, so they would either have done it themselves with what my excuse was, or knew somebody who had done it with my excuse. Take seasickness, for instance. I was telling somebody, the, the, I, two, the first two times I tried it, I got knocked out because I was seasick. And I threw up so much that I was so weak, I felt like I couldn't continue on. But what I'd find out, I'd talk to this, this person, and they said they had thrown up for hours and hours and hours, just like I had. But when their stomach finally emptied out, they were able to start getting food back in. They were starting to get, get some, some food that was easy on their stomach back in. And they gained their strength back. And they finally, and they made it to France. I had quit too early. As far as the hypothermia goes, I had talked, I thought that when I was shivering, that one year I made it 17 miles. I was out there almost 12 hours, like 11 hours and 45 minutes. And I had gotten to where I was shivering. You know, the whole time I was shivering and I was like, uh, well, not the whole time, but the last couple hours I was shivering so bad when I stopped to feed, I was like this. And then I started getting weaker and weaker. I could barely lift my arms out of the, out of the water. And I remember I talked to my friend, my friend about it. And he told me, he said, I said, hey, I got knocked out because I got hypothermia. And I got really weak and I couldn't continue on. He goes, really? He goes, you were hypothermic, huh? Did you know your name? I go, yes, I knew my name. He goes, well, you weren't hypothermic. Hypothermic is when you're so delirious and so out of it, you don't know your name. You were just cold. I was just cold. I go, well, why was I so weak? He said, well, what was your taper? What was your rest coming into the channel swim? I said, well, four days before, I had attempted it, and I'd lasted four hours, and, that's, and I went out because of seasickness. He said, four hours? You were tired. That's what happened to you. You were just tired. You weren't hypothermic. You were tired. I said, whoa, okay. Well, there goes that excuse. I was just I wasn't hypothermic, I was just tired. I was just cold. So this last year, I made it, I swam 17 miles. I was at the 17 mile mark and I got a sign that said four miles till shore. And this big giant cloud blew in, big storm blew in, separated me from the boat. I ended up swimming, I ended up swimming about 20 miles, but, but I, I didn't make it. The boat ended up being, the boat got pushed back, ended up, when I, I lost the boat for a while, you know, just, just a few minutes, you know, or whatever, probably not even that long, but in my head it felt like forever. I was having those scenes from the, you know, from uh, the, the perfect storm where the guy's out there by himself, anyway. And so I saw the, finally found the boat, and it was 500 yards towards England, and when I swam to the boat, I, you know, he, the pilot pulled it, he says, I can't stay with you in these stormy conditions, not with the boat, you know, going that slow to stay with me. And so, you know, so he ended up pulling me. But I thought to myself, after I heard Simon's story, well, maybe it's my responsibility to keep an eye on the boat, too. And once the boat drifted from on my side out in front of me, maybe I should have looked a lot more looking for that boat instead of letting it get blown away and just keep chasing it all over. the. I would just chase it all over the place. And if I could last 20 hours, usually these storms eventually end after a couple hours, two or three hours. They end because they're, they're not forecast. They're a surprise storm. And surprise storms usually aren't horrendous, usually. Um, so anyway, so if I could have stayed with the boat, I wouldn't have been pulled. All I would have to do is mentally tell myself I'm swimming 20 hours and keep my eye on that boat. So anyway, 
what I've learned from all this is no excuses. Yeah, no excuses. Now, if I don't make it, I got to immediately look at myself. Did I have the knowledge? Did I have the skills? Was I a good enough swimmer? Was I trained enough to swim in rough water? This year we're going out, we're going to drop me out in the Pacific, out about 10 miles out to where it's called a potato patch. And I'm going to try to swim to shore because I'm going to get some rough water training. Probably rougher than it'll be in the channel, maybe. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> but anyway, because I'm taking that excuse out of the ballpark. And then when I tell the guy, when I tell Fred, Fred's my buddy, I love Fred, there's only one way I'm getting on this boat. And it's in this, <laughs> it's either I get to France or I'm in a body bag. Fred will probably laugh, he'll probably be up there and go, he'll probably, I'll probably be out there and all sick or something, he'll throw me in the body bag and say, just get in that damn thing, Bill, and uh, let's get this over with. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No excuses. We're going for France this time. No excuses. That's what, that's my main lesson is there's always a solution. And if you can get the solutions before and you can, you're ready for it, then you already know, you already got what, one leg up on the whole situation. You know, it's not this humongous surprise. So anyway, if you're interested, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter. You can subscribe to my YouTube account and get these videos regularly. If you got a question for me, you can email me at epicbillbradley at gmail.com and I, give me a couple weeks to get back to you, but I will. And then also, if you're interested in having me speak to your team, your group, your organization, your company, you can also email me at epicbillbradley at gmail.com. Thank you very much.